You ever notice how the art of war, it's always popping up on those like must read lists. Yeah. And it's not just for like military buffs, it's for CEOs, athletes, you name it. <laughs> kind of wild, right? This ancient Chinese military text right there next to books on like self-improvement. What do you think they're getting out of that? Well, I think it's kind of amazing, mm -hmm. you know, those core principles, mm -hmm. strategy, planning, really getting your competition. They just, they resonate way beyond like just the battlefield. For sure. Okay, so today we're taking a deep dive into a little Sun Tzu wisdom. Mm. And while well, history is a little fuzzy on who Sun Tzu actually was. Right. Shrouded in mystery. <laughs> but we do have this amazing text chock full of, you know, insights on warfare in ancient China. But before anyone freaks out, like we are not turning you into warriors today. No, no boot camp but here. <laughs> we're going to see how these principles, they're actually surprisingly relevant, I think, to like anyone facing a challenge, yeah. a competitive field, even just a tough decision. It's almost like taking this ancient wisdom and then using it to like crush that presentation next week, <laughs> you know, or finally get your point across in that meeting that's I been like where you're going with this. driving you crazy. And Sun Tzu, he does not mess around like right out the gate. One of the first things he hits us with is this idea of preparation. And I'm not talking about like glancing at your notes five minutes before. He says, and this is a direct quote, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Oh. Talk about confidence. Right. That's, I mean, it's such a powerful statement. And I think it speaks to this idea, this core idea that knowledge, it really is power. So like in the business world, you know, you translate that to market research, right? You've got to really understand who your competitors are, what your strengths and weaknesses are, and where you're vulnerable critically. Yeah. It's this combination of knowing yourself and knowing the playing field so you can anticipate those challenges, not just react to them as they come at you, you know, a thousand miles an hour. So if you're listening right now, think about it this way. Let's say you're prepping for like a big pitch, right? Sun Tzu would tell you to look at that conference room like your own personal battlefield. Who are you pitching to? What do they care about? What are their motivations? How can you tailor your whole approach to be the most effective? That, my friend, is preparation, Sun Tzu style. 100%. And this ties directly into another one of big themes, which is deception. Okay. Now, before anyone gets any ideas, we are not advocating for, like, lying or being shady. No, no, not at all. Right. What Sun is talking about is it's about shaping perceptions, right? Okay. Strategically. Eh. And one of his most famous lines, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard it, is all warfare is based on deception. It's a good one. But think of it less like straight up trickery and more like how can you be strategically unpredictable? Okay. So let's say there's a company, right? Brand new, they're entering a new market. They might want to downplay their actual size at first, you know? appear a little weaker than they actually are. So they're lulling the competition into this false sense of security. 100%. They might even offer up what seems like a concession, right? A little bait, if you will. I like it. To steer their competition in a direction that ultimately benefits them. It's playing that long game, not just the immediate hand. You know. It's like a marketing campaign. You don't reveal everything about the product right away. Create that little mystery. You're leading the narrative. You're not just reacting, which, by the way, this all feeds directly into his concept of the landscape of advantage. Yeah. He describes it through, and this is kind of cool, nine varieties of ground. Nine. Now, obviously, we're not talking about literal battlefields here most of the time. Right. But just like a general needs to know, okay, am I fighting uphill, downhill? Mm -hmm. You need to know the opportunities and the dangers in your arena. 100%. So think about a market that's just changing rapidly, okay. right? That's your difficult ground in Sun Tzu's terms. You have to be adaptable, resourceful. Yeah. But then on the flip side, let's say you've spent years building this incredible network. Right. You've got allies, you've got contacts. That's like having that, that ground of intersecting highways. You've got options. I love that. Okay, so we've got preparation, we've got deception, we've got to know our terrain. This next one though, this one might surprise people. It's the human element. And I think people hear art of war, they think, oh, ruthless, you know? Right. But get this, regard your soldiers as your children, this is a quote, and they will follow you into the deepest valleys. Wow. That's powerful. That is powerful. And you know, it's so easy to get caught up in the strategy, the tactics, that we forget about the human beings involved. Yeah. But that trust, that loyalty, even in the most cutthroat environments, that is essential. It's about getting everyone on board with the mission, right? Working towards that shared goal, no matter how small, no matter how big. And that takes more than just barking orders, right? It's gotta be that 
shared purpose. Look, you said that loyalty that Sun Tzu, he was all about. You know, that kind of leads us to something that might seem even more unexpected from a military strategist, and that's spies. Okay, Sun Tzu goes deep on this. We're talking five different types of spies, which it sounds kind of intense at first glance, but if you think about it, information gathering vital in warfare. Minimizing your risk, <laughs> maximizing your chances of success. I mean, that's something we can all get behind. Totally. Mm. And I think we all secretly want to be a little more James Bond when it comes to, you know, gathering intel in our own lives, right? But before anyone goes full cloak and dagger on us, please no. We are definitely not advocating for anything shady or unethical. Not at all. It's about making informed decisions. That's what this boils down to. So you've got that big presentation coming up. Time to put on your little spy hat, do a little digging. Right. What are the pain points of the people you're presenting to? What are their priorities? What keeps them up at night? Okay, so we're talking like almost ethical intel gathering here, right? 100%. It's about being aware, being informed, and then using that knowledge ethically, of course, to your advantage. I like it. Which, this actually brings us back to Sun Tzu's thing about adaptability. He was really big on that, which he links to this idea of like unfathomable plans, mm. you know? So if they don't see it coming. They can't counter it. Right. Oh. It's that element of surprise. Keeps them guessing. Okay, but that means you have to be pretty adaptable yourself. You've got to be ready to adjust on the fly. Mm. He compares tactics to water. Constantly flowing, always adapting to the terrain. Interesting. You need that same fluidity in how you approach things. Yeah. Whatever your battlefield throws at you, you can handle it. I like it. So how do we actually do that? It's one thing to like sit here, admire Sun Tzu's wisdom. How do we take it from the book right. into our lives? It all comes down to, yeah. it all comes down to, like we were saying, that self-awareness, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing what you're good at, what your weaknesses are. But then taking it a step further, Sun Tzu, he'd say, you know, know your enemy. Yeah. But for us, it's more like understanding your competitor, right? Yeah. Your client, whoever you're dealing with. What makes them tick? What are their goals? Right. And yeah, what are their weaknesses? That's where that ethical intel gathering comes in, you know? Okay, but we're not talking about like digging up dirt on someone, are we? No, no, not at all. Okay. It's more like, you know, understanding their perspective. Right. What are their goals? What do they value? Totally fair game. Okay. Yeah. And once you have that, you can start to kind of anticipate, right? Yeah. Their reactions, the moves they might make. Okay, so you're not just reacting anymore. Exactly. You become proactive. Which is huge when we're talking strategy, right? Yeah. So you're kind of taking control of the situation. 100%. Hmm. Instead of just letting things happen to you, you're making decisions that steer things where you want them to go. Okay. You're shaping the narrative. I like it. Now, this doesn't mean you got to become like a, some master manipulator, you know, right. behind the scenes pulling strings. It's more about just being aware. Right of the power dynamics in any situation. Okay. And then using that strategically. That makes me think though about the human element, right? We were talking about that. How do you balance that with this idea of like outmaneuvering people? Oh, that's such a good point. It's about balance, isn't it? Yeah. Because Sun Tzu talked about treating your soldiers well, you know, right. building that respect, loyalty. For us, that's about building strong relationships with your team, your colleagues, even your competitors sometimes. So it's not always about like crushing the competition. Not always, no. Mm. Sometimes it's about finding those win-win situations, collaborating. Okay. And to do that well, you gotta have some empathy. You gotta be able to see it from their side, you know. Even if you don't agree with them. Even if you don't agree, exactly. But just understanding. It's about finding that, that common ground, I think, even in a competitive situation. All right. Honestly, that can be such a powerful thing. Because when people feel heard, right, right, like you get where they're coming from, they're much more open to your ideas. So it's not about just winning at all costs. Right. It's about winning in a way that builds trust, strengthens things. It's a different kind of victory. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And I think Sun Tzu, you know, as much as he talked about warfare, he got that on a deeper level. Yeah. True victory. The kind that lasts, that's built on respect, understanding. Yeah, and even and maybe like a little bit of compassion in there too. A hundred percent. Which actually, you know, that reminds me of another one of his insights. He said, uh, the greatest victory is that which requires no battle. Ooh, what do you make of that one? To me, it's about picking your battles. Okay. Sometimes the smartest move is not to fight at all. Interesting. 
you achieve your goal through diplomacy, through collaboration, maybe even, you know, strategic retreat sometimes. It's like that old saying, like, you might win the battle but lose the war. Exactly. So sometimes taking a step back, maybe finding a different path. That's the real power move. It's about seeing that bigger picture, recognizing that what seems like a setback now, that might actually set you up for something way bigger later on. So as we're kind of wrapping up this deep dive into the art of war, what's the one big thing you want to leave our listener with today? You know, I think it's this. These principles, they've stuck around for a reason. Yeah. For centuries. So whether you're leading a company, a team, just navigating your own life. It's messy out there. It is. It is. Understanding strategy, being prepared, knowing the lay of the land, yeah. your own personal battlefield, I'm right? Serious. It makes all the difference. So be adaptable, be resourceful, and always, always be thinking a few steps ahead. Exactly. And never, ever underestimate the power of knowing yourself and knowing those around you. Because at the end of the day, knowledge coupled with strategic action. That's how you win. That's your ultimate weapon. I love it. It's true. <laughs> you know, it's not just about winning like this one little thing, but like, how do the choices you make today, right? how do those play out, you know, down the line? The ripple effect. And speaking of long-term thinking, Sun Tzu, he had some pretty interesting ideas about spies. Information gathering. And before anyone freaks out, you know, we're not talking like literal spies always, but right. information in the right hands. Oh, yeah. That's powerful. It can be. So, okay. Imagine you're about to launch this, like, killer new product right? right yeah a very unfathomable plan in that situation might be what if you kind of subtly you know seed the market with these little clues about a feature okay that your competitors they would see as a weakness oh interesting but you've got this like secret solution you've already engineered it mm -hmm. so they're focusing all their energy on this weakness that it doesn't even really exist isn't even really a thing and bam Ugh. product launches <laughs> You got him. It's like 4D chess. Like you're playing chess, they're playing checkers. Right, totally. It's like, you know, a magician, right? Yeah. They're using misdirection. Yes. But instead of a rabbit out of a hat, it's like, boom. <laughs> Amazing product launch. A killer product. Exactly. And the beauty of that, I think, is that it keeps you one step ahead, but it also forces you to really think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You gotta be thinking creatively. Not just what are they gonna do, Yeah. but how are they going to react to my reaction? It's, it's like you're not even just adapting to the terrain anymore. You're like shaping it. You're creating your own opportunity. Yeah. I love that. See, that's Sun Tzu. That's what it's all about. He got that like victory. It's not just about being stronger, having more stuff. Right. It's about intelligence, outsmarting them, outmaneuvering. 100%. Okay. So, big picture. Someone's listening to us, they're wrapping up this deep dive. What's the one thing you want them to walk away with from all this ancient wisdom? I want people to see that these ideas, this isn't just like, you know, dusty old history. Yeah. These principles in the art of war, they've lasted for centuries. Yeah. Because they're about something, I don't know, fundamental. They speak to something, yeah. About strategy. Yeah. About human nature, mm -hmm. about success. It's like a crash course, you know? Yeah. In how to think strategically. It yeah. just happens to be disguised as this like military book. Exactly. And the best part is you can use this stuff anywhere. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, leading some huge company. Yeah. Oh, or you're trying okay. to negotiate a raise or just get through a family dinner. Oh, those can be tough. Those are the worst battlefields. Yeah. But those principles, mm -hmm. they still apply. You know, preparation is key. Preparation, knowing your audience, and just being ready to adapt. So, listener, next time you're facing down a challenge, a decision, yeah, or you just want to like level up your thinking a little bit, right? Remember, the art of war is still around for a reason. It works. Who knows? Maybe the key to your own victories is tucked away in those pages. Until next time, keep exploring and keep strategizing. Thanks so much for watching. We spend a lot of time putting these videos together. So if you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give this video a like and a share to anybody you think might like it. And if you have any thoughts or suggestions on the video, go ahead and leave a comment. We make sure to read them all. Thanks and see you next time.